October 11th, 2018, Baikonur Cosmodrome, Kazakhstan. Soyuz MS-10 sits fueled and ready on the launch pad. It's set to be a routine launch for a rocket system that's half a century old. But that's about to change. There is no safe part of space travel. It is on the frontier, and it's going to be a challenge. On board MS-10 is an American astronaut. Nick Haig was on his first trip to space, something that he had spent years training for and looking forward to. His mission to the International Space Station will take Haig away from his wife and two young sons for six months. Accompanying Haig is cosmonaut and mission commander Alexei Ovchinin. Also married with a young daughter, this is Ovchinin's second trip into space. Taking him there is a Soyuz FG rocket. Since the space shuttle program was canceled, the Americans are completely reliant on the Russian Soyuz spacecraft to get astronauts up to the International Space Station. The pride of Roscosmos, the Russian space agency. This ancient design predates even the Saturn V rocket that took Americans to the moon. The Soyuz spacecraft and rocket system is flying since 1966, and it has been and remains the main transport system for the human spaceflight program in the Soviet Union and in Russia. It might be a relic of the space race era, but since 1971, Soyuz has made over 100 manned launches with no fatalities. It is the most reliable rocket in the Russian fleet, and we can say easily in the world. Two hours before launch, Haig and Ovchinin board the capsule. They're on the pad, the rocket's fueled. They're hearing the final system checks come over their comms. They're ready to go. Launch command has been issued. Final countdown begins for the nine minute ride into orbit. It's a beautiful day, it's clear sky, perfect weather. I always keep my fingers crossed at every launch and I say a little prayer because things can go wrong like that. The engines start up gently, they build up thrust, and then the vehicle just kind of rises off of the pad. Lift off of the Soyuz MS-10 to the International Space Station. When it takes off, you're looking up, up, up as it keeps flying up, and you can feel your jaw dropping. One minute into the flight, the Soyuz is traveling at around 1,500 miles per hour and has already reached an altitude of 10 miles. Inside the capsule, Haig is enjoying his first ride. For the first two minutes of the launch, everything is going perfectly. The craft's four strap-on boosters burn out their liquid fuel and will shortly be fired away from the second stage. You feel that, you know, hear the explosive bolts fire. Then, everything goes wrong. You see a really violent jolt of the spacecraft. You see this unusual shaking. You see the crew being jerked around. You see their arms violently moving back and forth. The light comes on, and Haig looks over to Avicinen, as if saying, is this OK? And Avicinen indicates it is not. On board, Haig and Avicinen can't work out what's causing the jolting. But cameras on the ground pick up evidence that whatever it is, it's serious. You, know, you see the cloud of debris. And so that doesn't look right. Mission Control realizes that this crew's in danger. Moments after the initial violent jolt, Haig reports experiencing a sensation that he should not be feeling. Suddenly, they're weightless. This moment of weightlessness is way too early for them to have reached orbit. If you're feeling that, you would immediately know that the thrust had stopped. The unexplained fault has caused the engines to shut down, and now the rocket is falling back to Earth. There is a message going booster problem through the intercom system. Something critical has gone wrong. The crippled Soyuz rocket is plummeting in a rapid, uncontrolled descent from a height of 58 miles. And now, Haig and Avchinin are facing a desperate situation. There's that realization that, A, I'm not going into space, and B, I might not survive this. Haig and Avchinin are desperate to escape such a horrific end but they have no idea if their parachute has been damaged by the smash-up. All they can do is wait and hope. Mission Control watches helplessly 
as the plummeting capsule reaches a critical point in its descent. At this point, the capsule has gone over the horizon and they've lost line of sight communications. They don't know where the capsule is. They don't know what happened to the crew. If the crew is incapacitated or if the spacecraft has been badly damaged and, and can't operate anymore, then, then the crew is going to be lost. Hague and Ovchinen reach the moment of truth. There's a big bang, explosive bolts, a parachute comes out, the spacecraft tumbles around, and you're already deconditioned and dizzy, and so now you're even more dizzy. The parachute slows the descent of the capsule, but the crew are not home and safe yet. That landing is a controlled crash, even under the best circumstances. Will they be coming down in Kazakhstan on the steps, or are they going to land someplace entirely unsafe? 19 minutes and 49 seconds after liftoff, MS-10 impacts the Earth, around 250 miles away from the launch site. The status of Haig and Avchinen is unknown. It may not have been the prettiest of landings, but both men have escaped a horrible death. Capsule comes in on the parachutes, and at the last minute, the retro rockets fire to cushion the landing. It skids into the dirt and comes to rest on its side. Both men are battered, but manage to avoid serious injury. And Hay can look out and see the dirt 12 inches below the window. The Earth is tantalizingly close, but Haig must wait another agonizing hour before the rescue teams free him from the wrecked capsule. Haig was supposed to go to space that day, but instead there he was on the ground, breathing a sigh of relief. Being able to finally uh, hold my wife in my arms and, and give her a hug was just enormous and made me feel like, okay, yeah, I'm finally back and safe. As Russians very often say in cases like this, we had a successful test of the uh, launch escape system. In November 2018, the Russian investigation issues its report. It reveals that the launch failure was caused by a sensor that had become mysteriously damaged while the rocket sat on the launch pad. Is it a manufacturing error? Could it be an assembly problem? Is it sabotage? In space disasters, sabotage can never be uh, ruled out. Every rocket launch is a journey into the unknown, where unforeseen dangers lie in wait. Everybody realizes what we do is difficult and that there's risk involved. And it's important to understand that it's worth the risk. What we're doing for human exploration, it's for the benefit of all.